Hello, and welcome to the fourth video in this series. I am still quite new to this hobby, and I am continuously learning new things as I observe the life within the glass box. This video is not going to be an in-depth care guide, but a short look into my beginner's thoughts and experiences to give some answers to those initial questions I had about the pets I am keeping. Today we will be looking at the Ember Tetra. Other than some guppies that were passed down to me originally, these were one of the first fish that I actually did some research on and chose to purchase for myself. The decision to get some Ember Tetra came down to their teeny size and peaceful nature, while still looking amazing with their bright copper color. The story of getting my Ember Tetras is quite interesting in my opinion as well. I was torn between getting harlequin rasboras or tetras, and while looking at a chain pet store that normally doesn't carry fish, I found they recently brought in a small tank near the back with just that. Being the smaller of the two, I decided to purchase six ember tetra they had at the store, and left with an order for six more. It took quite some time for the second group of fish to come in, and when they did, they arrived at the store with ick. Which meant I had to wait longer again while the store treated them. After much longer than expected, I was able to go back to the store to finally bring my fishies home. Once I arrived at the store though, the fish guy wasn't in, and the only person able to help was the reptile guy, who wasn't very comfortable with a net. So I ended up awkwardly netting the six new fish myself. While trying to net the last one, he actually jumped out of the tank, luckily landing right on my wrist where I could quickly get him into the bag. Ever since, they have lived happily in my planted nano setup with some neocaridina and my bamboo shrimp named Tempura. As a beginner, I would say these fish were a pretty good choice to start with. Though these fish are very small, coming in at less than an inch in length for an adult, they seem quite hardy, but that small size also makes them quite skittish and easily stressed. I would say if you are planning on getting some of these fish, Lots of real plants and a larger group is best, and will help them feel at home and show their shoaling behavior more often. I have my tank set up in a way where there are more plants in the back, and an open swimming area in the front, and generally during the day the fish will just stay amongst the plants. However, most mornings and evenings, they come out and school together, front and center. They tend to be pretty camera shy though. When I brought the first six tetra home, I noticed the colors weren't as vibrant as I had expected. They were fairly dull and mostly transparent. This came down to a few factors. After getting the second group of six tetra, I learned that originally, I only had some females, which tend to have a less saturated color overall. Having a larger group of them helped bring out the colors even more too. Now with 12 fish, the colors became quite vibrant. I also started feeding live baby brine shrimp more often, and this made a big difference. These fish love the baby brine shrimp, and I highly recommend it being a main part of their diet if you want your tetras to look their best as well. Males are generally a little smaller, and have more vibrant colors especially when they are getting ready to mate. I struggled with telling them apart at first, though I feel it's pretty easy to tell now. Other than the color difference, I find the easiest way to tell gender is the belly. Females will be a lot rounder and wider than males. When it comes to feeding these little guys, they can be quite picky. This mostly comes down to just how little their mouths are. I've already mentioned baby brine shrimp. I also feed mine flake regularly, making sure to crush it into small crumbs before feeding. For my little fish anyway, frozen foods can be hit or miss. The main thing to keep in mind when feeding is their small size. They have small mouths and small bellies too, feed small bits in small amounts. Just before writing the script, I had just had my first Ember Tetra loss, which came down to him choking on a piece of bloodworm that was a little too big for him. Other than that though, I have not had any issues with these fish at all, which is why I say they are fairly hardy. There has been no return of the ick and no signs of any other common fish disease either. Keeping up with regular water changes and making sure everything is consistent helps with that. When it comes to keeping ember tetra with other fish, it's important to keep the small size in mind again. 
Amber tetra are peaceful fish, but can make a nice snack for some larger or more aggressive fish, so other smaller fish like Rasbor and other tetra make for better options. These fish can make a good addition to a planted beta tank as well. At the time of writing, I still haven't had any breeding happen yet. However, I have seen some males showing off for the females. Breeding is something I would like to look further into into the future, as apparently it's pretty simple as long as conditions are right, and raising temperature gradually over a couple days to around 80 degrees should help with triggering mating responses. I'll be sure to post a video if I do find some fry in the tank, so why not consider subscribing so you can be there when that happens? As a beginner into this hobby, would I recommend Demer Tetras? Yes, I would. If you are also starting out or looking to get these as one of your first fish, I would say there are some easier fish to keep, but as long as you keep their diminutive stature in mind, they are worth that little extra effort. And as always, thanks for watching.